Brian Todd and Danny Freeman are both out front live for us in Baltimore. And I want to start with you, Brian. Tell us more about this incredible glimpse that we are getting from the investigation on board the Dolly tonight. Right, Brianna, this is an extraordinary glimpse of really the point of impact of, of the, the Dali uh, at the point where it struck the bridge. And this is video handed out to us by the NTSB uh, just a, a short time ago. Really uh, some dramatic video of investigators uh, walking around and surveying the, the bow of the ship. This is the bow, the front of the ship that struck uh, the, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And you can see these investigators combing around there. They're right underneath some of this wreckage. It's very dramatic. You really have not seen uh, images that are this close to the point of impact. Uh, my team and I were on a boat a couple of days ago, and we got to within a, a few hundred yards of the ship. We had a very dramatic view of the point of impact, but it was not like this. This is extraordinarily close. Uh, we were fortunate to be able to to have this video shared with us by the NTSB uh, just a short time ago. And again, uh, you can just see the dramatic damage, the wreckage there, uh, several tons of, of metal and concrete draped over the bow of the Dali. Uh, there's some other video that they shared with us as well, where you see some investigators up into what an area that appears to be either the bridge or an area similar to the bridge of the ship. And they are looking at some screens there and it appears they're maybe downloading some data. We do know that they have recovered the voyage recorder and have analyzed that and from that voyage recorder they've the NTSB has given us this really dramatic timeline of how this accident unfolded uh, early Tuesday morning and, and, and you know, without going through the each bullet point of that timeline what I can tell you is that they told us that it, <clears throat> excuse me it was less than five minutes from the time the first alarm sounded uh, at close to 1.30 in the morning to the point of impact or the point where the pilot reported the bridge down. I mean, it was an extraordinary amount of time. There, was only, there were only a couple of minutes uh, between the time that the pilot called in that dramatic mayday call and the point of impact. And when you think of that, uh, and then you see some of this video again that we can show you hopefully of the, of the, of the close-up of this damage and the, and the force with which this vessel hit the bridge, I mean, it was so fortunate that those few minutes were able, a couple of minutes were able to elapse and law enforcement and other authorities were able to shut down that bridge and prevent any automobiles or trucks from coming onto the bridge. Then again, it was 1.30 in the morning and maybe the traffic w wouldn't be too heavy, but it, it, there, there is still considerable traffic on that bridge at all times. So uh, again, when you see this video showing the force of impact there, Brianna, it is really, really extraordinary. Um, and, and as far as the video that we can show you, the live picture we can show you, I'm going to step out of the frame here for a second, and our photojournalist Joe Merkel is going to train our, our, our camera onto one of the vessels here. That is the Palanca Rio. That is a, a chemical and oil tanker that has been stranded here for days, and it's going to be stranded here for several more days or weeks, along with 11 other vessels, including three bulk carriers and an automobile carrier. So that's one of the ships that stranded here. They're going to be here for weeks. The governor just said this is not going to be a quick recovery effort. Brianna? Yeah, certainly is not. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for that. Out front now, Mary Schiavo, former inspector general at the U.S. Department of Transportation, and Ian Ralby, who is a maritime law and security expert. Uh, Mary, we have this new video tonight, quite extraordinary, of NTSB investigators on the Dolly cargo ship, and they're inspecting hazardous materials. They're gathering data. I know you've been able to watch this video. Tell us what stands out to you. Well, what stands out is already they've been able to make a lot of inroads. The NTSB has been able to make inroads in telling us what happened. The why is going to come later, but we now know there was just one minute and 29 seconds from the May Day to get the people off the bridge. We know that once the power went out, the, uh, the data recorder did stop recording many parameters, but they were able to tell the speed of the ship when it hit the bridge, seven knots, eight miles an hour and that they do have a uh, positioning of the rudder that was still recorded. And of course they had all the uh, voice data that they still have. So that's a good bit of information that they have to work with. And they are in the process of downloading and getting all the other information that they can get from the bridge, from anywhere else on the ship, from any other uh, recordings or cameras and starting their work in interviewing all of the ship crew and the, uh, and the river pilots. That will be a very important part. So. Even with the rudimentary data they have, uh, we have a timeline. We know what happened. We know the speed. 
The why is going to be much more difficult. They haven't even uh, begun to release any information on what happened to the ship while it was in dock before it uh, left and entered the channel. That's going to have to come a little bit later, and that's going to help us ex understand why rather than just what happened. Yeah, certainly. Ian, there's video that we've seen, right? It shows the power outage before the crash, all of the lights going out there. We see it right there. I know that you think the likeliest cause could actually be a problem with the ship's computers. I explain what you're thinking. Well, I think we have to keep a very open aperture as to, to the question of why. Um, there are a lot of unknowns, and we should be asking a huge number of questions right now. And a lot of people can take this as an opportunity to get to understand the maritime domain and the maritime industry a lot better uh, as we start to recognize just how critically important it is to our life on land. But what we have to look at are at least three key hypotheses as to what happened. The first is that there's some sort of mechanical or electrical issue, perhaps because of maintenance, perhaps because of a human error uh, on board the ship. Uh, and that's possible. The second one is that there is a problem with the fuel of the ship. Also possible, probably the least likely. Uh, but we have seen this issue come up in the past. In 2018, there were quite a few ships that went dead out of uh, the port of Houston, Singapore, Rotterdam, some key ports because of bad bunker fuel. Um, but the third is that there's some problem with the control systems on the ship, and that points to a cyber problem. Uh, it isn't clear whether that cyber problem is either unintentional or intentional, but we have to, again, keep a very wide open mind about this to see what really did occur and why it occurred. Do you think investigators are keeping uh, the aperture wide enough as they're looking? I, I hope so, and I, I certainly would, would assume that uh, the likes of the Coast Guard, with whom I work very closely, and the NTSB would, would be doing that. Uh, but I think we need to be careful uh, as a wider public not to jump to too many conclusions. And we did hear a statement from the government right out the, the, uh, the, the morning of the incident uh, that there was no malicious intent that was indicated. And that is probably a, a very fair statement regarding the crew and pilots on board the ship. They did an amazing amount of work to try to uh, warn people and prevent the, the, uh, the disaster from occurring. But that isn't necessarily true from outside actors. And we need to just be, be careful about assuming too many things at the outset of an investigation of something that is so critically important to our national economy and our national security. Mary, what do you think? Well, I think what's going to happen next, and the, and the NTSB does its work by dividing all the different things that it has to do up in, in to committees. They've got a nautical operations committee, a human performance and engineering, a highway and bridge engineering, survival factors, a records group. But they also have the ops group, which was gathering literally every record concerning that ship. What happened to that ship when it was in port? And there have been, uh, the NTSB has not confirmed the reports, but there were reports of mechanical problems in the port, in the harbor when it was docked. And they will go through all of those things and a lot will be told in the records. As they get and pour through those records of the maintenance and the oversight of the ship, there will be an awful lot revealed, not just about the computers and the cyber, but about the overall health and, and um the maintenance records of that ship. What happened while it was in port? That's going to be a very important thing. Yeah, no doubt key. Uh, Mary Schiavo, Ian Ralby, thank you to both of you.